I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show. Larry Kudlow, CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the Weekend is here with me, and we turn to foreign affairs in conversation about the Republicans being led by Senator Bob Corker of Tennessee and in the majority in the Senate, winning today a 19 to nothing vote in the Foreign Relations Committee to report the Iran, the Corker Menendez bill to the floor of the Senate for debate. This has to do with the Senate insisting on oversight of the Iran negotiation, the framework from Lausanne, Switzerland, now to be discussed between now and June 30th, and an emerging deal that satisfies all doubts about the suspect secret nuclear weapons program of Iran these last 30 years. That's the big frame, but there's partisanship here too, and there's also the question of the Obama foreign policy. I mentioned Senator Corker's tweet, and I'll read it now. This happened about four hours ago. Senator Corker writes, the simple fact is that the White House dropped its veto threat because they, the White House, weren't going to have the votes to sustain a veto. We welcome Victor Davis Hanson of the Hoover Institution. Victor, a very good evening to you. I understand your voice is weak from being very clear about the contest between the White House and the Senate. Do you regard Senator Corker's tweet tonight and this 19 to nothing vote in the Senate about the Iran deal, do you regard this as a vindication of those who have doubts of the president method of approaching Iran. Good evening to you. Good evening. Yeah. I, I sort of do, but I sort of don't either. I think what's happening is that even before we got to formal discussions on the treaty, there were indications on the Iranian side, and, and what you mentioned in referencing Putin's sale of missiles, that they weren't really going to abide by anything. They, they kept up the anti-American rhetoric. They kept contradicting everything that Obama had insisted, and what Kerry had insisted was going to take place. So I think the Democrats on the committee in the Senate thought one of two things. Either they were going to supply Obama some ammunition by saying, you know, the president's right, we hardliners are just as hard as they are, and therefore you better cut a deal because the Senate is moving, you know, to the right. Or, and I think more likely, they see the whole thing as unraveling. And it's a way to rescue Obama from a pretty embarrassing fiasco if this thing continues to play for six six months like this. So I think they're saying to Obama, we can get you out of this uh, because you really stuck, stuck your head in this meat grinder and they're going to drag you along like they did Jimmy Carter for months if somebody doesn't rescue you. Very nice. So the Senate Democrats on the Foreign Relations Committee uh, look to be moving to defend their president from poor decisions. Larry? The only thing I'd say, uh, you know, as as Victor, I mean, I don't, I don't trust Iran. I don't believe anything would get verified. But the tricky part about the legislation, Victor, is what they're voting on. Whenever they vote on the floor of the Senate, is a mandatory process that the Senate must vote, uh, whatever by June or July, when the final deal is revealed presumably revealed. And in other words, they have to make a vote. It doesn't necessarily mean that the vote will go against Obama. All it is is a process issue. There'll be a second vote. There's a second vote to either ratify or not. And Democrats might come back around on that. That's the thing that troubles me, I guess. No, I think you're right. I think it's pretty wise on the Democrats' point of view because they achieve one of two things. That is, right now, they give Obama some leverage, and, and he can always tell the Iranians, i got to deal with the Senate, just like you do, and they're very suspicious of this whole process. And then, if it turns out that things look good, then they can reverse their vote, as you suggest, but I think more likely that things are not going to look good, and then Obama can say, well, the Senate just sort of emasculated me, mm. and I had to cease. Either way, it's much better than making a fool of himself. You know, can I ask you, uh, you know, related but slightly different, the issue of economic sanctions, Victor, which I think on the whole, particularly with regard to banking, finance, and money, and oil, those sanctions have hurt Iran. And that's why Iran went to the table in the first place. Now, here's my question. Don't you think that they should, Obama should have linked economic sanctions with Iran's state-sponsored terrorist campaign 
And to quote Kissinger and Schultz in the Wall Street Journal, Iran's, you know, hegemonic designs for the whole area. I mean, you know, we could, they might defer, defer nukes for 10 years, but each day they have, you know, Hezbollah, Hamas, Houthis. Each day they're trying to take over the Middle East, and we're not doing anything to stop that. Well, it's even worse than that, Larry, because we didn't link them, but they did. So they're telling people uh, in the area, in Yemen and Lebanon and Syria and Iraq, and probably in the Gulf as well, the fact that they're talking to us, the Americans are talking to us, is really a de facto sanction of what we're doing. Mm. So we're going to continue to do it because we, we're green-lighted by America. They know what we're doing. They won't stop us because they're intent on these negotiations, and they're afraid to jeopardize them. Therefore, you people that are fence-sitting better look at uh, the new hegemony in the area because we're the rising power. So they've linked them even though we don't link them. The decision by Vladimir Putin of Russia to sell the S-300 anti-air system to Iran, it's been teased for months, if not years, and it was always regarded as a bridge too far, uh, moving the Middle East into an arms race that cannot be stopped. Now that Moscow has moved, Victor, has this changed the battlefield entirely for the United States, with Iran able to bring down even our aircraft if we were to launch a strike? That means that Iran is now effectively a nuclear power, correct? Sort of, because I don't. Uh, selling weapons doesn't mean they're going to master their usage, or that we don't know how to get around them. So I'm not so worried about that. But I think it, it's on both sides. I think Putin is saying to us, "Look what I just did. What are you going to do about it?" And we're going to do nothing. And that's going to be a further incitement for him. Maybe in a couple of months to go into the Baltic states, he wants to remind the world that we're not going to do anything. Um, and he's, this is a message not just to Iran, but also to Eastern Europe. Was that a blow to Mr. Obama when that was announced today, Victor? Bad oh, yeah, timing? Uh, absolutely. Um, yes. Absolutely. And you believe that it was meant as an act of aggression by, uh, by Moscow? I think it was meant to warn people that if you're thinking of, uh, muscular, in a muscular fashion, opposing our uh, Russian plans of aggrandizement, this is where you're going to end up because he won't stop this just like he won't stop me six months from now. Same thing with the Iranians. Uh, they're saying to us, if you're going to allow this to happen right in the middle of a negotiation while we're involved in the internal affairs of four countries, and you're not going to stop it then, you're never going to stop it. And we're giving that message to all of our uh, neutrals in the area. So if you you're know, in the Saudi Arabia, what do you make of this? In, in your uh, article, National Review article, you know, you talk about how Obama cannot distinguish between friends and enemies. And I, you know, I think that's such a key point, whether it's Egypt or the uh, Green Revolution in Iran, that phony election, there's a whole bunch of examples of that. So let me try this out on you. General Jack Keane has been saying to me on radio that from day one in 2009, Obama had a grand design vision in his head whereby he would reach detente, some kind of detente, quote-unquote, with Iran. You know, it's a bigger deal than just nuclear weapons. And with that detente, when he's going to convince Iran that we really can work together, uh, that allows the U.S. to disengage and get out of the region altogether. That's what General Keene is saying. What do you think? Well, I agree, and I think it's even worse because he thinks that he has a special relationship with Iran, so should this new regional power act badly, he feels he can get on the phone and sort of moderate their behavior. And he's done this also with Vladimir Putin and saying, you know what, this is the former Soviet republics are your sphere of influence to a lesser degree with China, maybe even the Caribbean with Cuba. He feels that the post-war order was somehow either, uh, I don't know, it was uh, imbalanced in the favor of the United States and he's trying to redress it. And he also feels that these, these countries are authentic, they're legitimate. They're not Western constructs. And he's, he has a soft spot for revolutionary societies like Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, Iran, Turkey. He feels somehow that they're authentic, and the only person with his unique background, characteristics, and worldview can negotiate with him. And, you know, he feels that maybe he, feel, maybe he feels he's doing well for his country, but... 
not going to be around when uh, these countries interpret that magnanimity as weakness and try to exploit it. Victor Davis Hanson of the Hoover Institution, whom we thank for making the, the effort with his voice, troubled by all the talking that Mr. Obama in encourages uh, his controversial decisions. Um, Larry, John, uh, uh, Larry Kudlow of CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. And right now, the 19 to nothing vote in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee requires interpretation. However, I mentioned that Bob Corker's interpretation is the White House backed down. I'm John Batchelor. <laughs>